Okay, Garrett, thank you very much. Um, so I would like also start by thanking the organizers, Jim Barber, for, for the invitation to this fantastic uh, symposium. In honor of Professor Betty Anderson, who uh, made a great contribution uh, to the NTU. So that's, uh, we celebrated the last night, so that's really good. I also uh, like uh, to thank you for putting up uh, this uh, very nice program. Uh, for the other speakers. Uh, so I think during the past one and a half You're days. All uh, very hand picked. Very good. Very biased. So, I was. A lot of inspirations. I uh, learned a lot also. Uh, I think during the past uh, one and a half day, uh, we have studied intensively how the oil bomb is formed, the water oxidation mechanism in nature in photosystem 2. If you, if you look, uh, the, let's say the present uh, catalytic cycle for water oxidation. I would say it is, is a far from complete. Maybe uh, the top part is relatively okay if say it's a half here from S01 to here. Then from S3 to S4 and S4 prime is more or less mystery still, uh, hang on around uh, how the water is um, yeah, inserted and the water structure of S4. And what happens with S4 prime with the Kirkadal percent years ago? I, uh, put up some uh, question mark or the missing point in the following way. So where is the open side of uh, this uh, natural catalyst? So it's still not so fixed. Eh? And how the two waters added to the open side of this catalyst and how these four charges, so far we have not discussed much, how the four charges are ranged from the S3 to S4 state. And what is the real role of this dangling magnet? I will address your question, actually. This plays a great role in nature, the dangling magnet. Why is it put outside the cube? And how this O bond is formed in the S4 state? And how does this catalytic socket complete it after getting rid of four electrons and four protons? You see? Uh, the existing proposals, uh, there are several proposals. Uh, cannot completely answer those questions I mentioned about. So it seems now we need a tentative proposal, okay? We need a new proposal to suggest the water oxidation catalysis in nature, okay? I know this is a kind of <laughs> uh, maybe a very dangerous claim, but let me finish and then we can start discussion. Uh, yeah. It's extremely dangerous, I know that. <laughs> so I'm not a biologist the first, I'm a chemist. Uh, let's say what's the, the reaction mechanism catalysis in the eyes of a, of a chemist, uh, personality like this. So based on those experimental results uh, reported in the literature during the past decade, and also our own understanding, and also deep thinking. So we've been working this mechanism for years, okay? Without doing experiment on the reading those literatures and trying to figure out what is going on there, particularly on the bottom part of the catalytic cycle. So uh, we try to provide you a whole picture of the water oxidation catalysis part of photosystem two. So we have to make assumption. We assume in the S0 state, there are two water molecules sitting on the calcium. That's more or less a great no debate, all right? But we also assume two hydroxyl groups sitting on the dangling magnets. I know some of them say maybe the W1 is water, it's not instead of OH. Okay, let's assume it's OH because that makes me a little comfortable for a catalytic cycle. Maybe it's okay with the water, still okay after this. But I feel better, yeah, with, with OH. Yeah. So just yeah. To say, yeah. And the charges on S0 state, I put uh, one magnet four on this position, and the rest is a magnet three, okay? So after charge, initial charge accumulation by getting, out, uh, getting rid of uh, two electrons and one proton, you reach the S2 state. So this is more or less uh, in common sense. Huh? Uh, maybe a little bit where does the first electron come from, this one or this one, so then leave it. So, but the S2 state is the same. The question now comes, how does the water, the first substrate water come into uh, the active side, so open side. We suggest the W3 water make insertion to this magnet, let's say between O5 and the magnet one here, yes, between these two from the W3. And then the W4 promoted 
to the W3 position. So after this is in, is insertion, you see insertion here. And then this become deprotonated, become OH. So a new water molecule comes in, the new water molecule via the calcium channel co comes in to the precision of W4, okay? So the W4, existing W4 promoted the W3, W3 inserted to this one, and the new water molecule through uh, the uh, uh, calcium channel take the precision of W4, okay? So you see the water comes by keeping the line, keeping the queue into the active site. Yeah, and uh, here the question is, uh, so how this uh, is, is possible? Uh, I think uh, yesterday you have listened to talk by <coughs> Professor Shen. Uh, so this actually, uh, this water insertion from W2 to uh, S2 to S3 has been observed by using the X-ray free uh, electron lasers. However, in our proposal, we don't suggest the oral bond formation between O5 and O6, okay? Rather, we would like to say, so all six, the new water from the W3 inserted to the Cuban is the successor of all five. They do not make the bond. It's the successor of the all five. The all five is living, putting the all five away from the Cuban. So uh, that's the, 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 the proposal we made from the S3. In the S3, the old magnet is in the valence state four. So this is okay. I think not much uh, debate on this. So from what happens from the S3 that this is a new thing. And we propose is a charge rearrangement. We also call this a charge disproportionation. So from the four magnets four, after charge rearrangement, you make one magnet seven and three magnet three. And here you push the O5 away from the Cuban and this OH place, replacing the role of O5. So you keep the form of the Cuban in the intact way and then you push the O5 away. So here you generate one dangling magnet seven and the Cuban is a magnet three. So the question now, is this possible to create one magnet seven and three magnet three from four magnets four via charge disproportionation? That's the question, right? To answer those questions, we have a look up at the literature um, during the past, uh, let's say in the beginning of 1970s or even 1980s, uh, a group of people uh, like um, uh, Shavirovich and Shilov and Kanepo and Tabiyev, they all reported that four magnet four can form one magnet seven and three magnet three and lead to the formation of oxygen, probably through a tetramark magnet uh, of four. And it's also, uh, have been some years later, Yagi and Narita also showed when they uh, studied the catalytic oxygen evolution from water induced by absorption of a, of a dimeric manganese complex with dimeoxyl, that's a Garbrick, uh, Bradwick also reported um, a decade ago. Then uh, they claim that it's also permanganate is formed and the four manganese cores are involved, although you put only dimeric manganese dimeoxyl uh, into the clay uh, compound. So based on above report, we propose that a charge re a rearrangement of four magnets four in nature, in photosystem two, that can lead to the formation of one magnet seven and three magnet three. So that is the, after the charge uh, rearrangement by kicking out one, is only one proton involved. So here you have the mag, in, as a first state, you have the magnet seven. In principle, this O and O5 can form oxygen bond at this stage. However, the kinetic is very slow. So if you go here, you need to go kick out the one electron from one of the magnets three. Suppose in the magnet three, this one's getting oxidized. Then you generate the magnet four here. This magnet four can work as Lewis acid. 
this lewis acid can promote the oral bond formation from the manganese 7 that's a permanganate so is this new oral bond formation mechanism possible i know a lot of people shake the hand shake the hand so uh, i would say it, it is possible so i provide you some uh, evidences here if you look at the existing uh, proposals for oral bond formation I think the people like uh, Garbrevik and Jim Barber, also other people, really prefer to say there is a dangly manganese with a high valence state. Okay, so manganese five, you said, and water nuclear filling attack from the chasm water. That's one way of thinking. There is another way of thinking that, from Parzebon's calculation, that he highlighted the oxo oxo radical formation. All bond formation, O5 and OA, okay? So we have been discussed these days. So in my eyes, this is uh, not possible. And also from uh, uh, Yogo Yano yesterday, he uh, says that the distance, I asked a couple of questions. The distance is a 2.0 Armstrong. It's a little bit far away of thinking forming this bond directly. But I think Parzeban also pointed out there's another possible pathway, and that is the so O5 OB formation. You see, this is a really uh, impressive uh, uh, calculation. So instead of O5 OA, there's a possible O bond formation between O5 and OB. And this has been reported um, years ago. So we really get inspired from, from uh, Per Zeban's uh, calculation on, on this mechanism. So here we propose the O bond formation within one magnet seven in photosystem two. So how about the thermodynamics? Is that possible to generate magnet 7 in nature? So if you look at the thermodynamics, the oxidation potential of P680 plus, it has 1.2. You see, uh, Hergadon already studied this uh, years ago. So it's 1.2 volt worth normal hydrogen electrode. To generate a permanganate, you need only 1.05. So there's a plenty driving force there, considering normal over potential in biological system is quite low. And also to uh, oxidize water at the pH 7, you see the over potential is, is, is good enough uh, is, so to drive this reaction. And it's also known for 100 years that permanganate can release oxygen, but the kinetically is very slow. So how to improve the kinetics of oral bond formation from the minus seven? That's the question. So I gave you some examples to show you the way to promote oral bond formation from permanganate. One, I would like to show you uh, back to 1970, early 1970s, by Krebs and Hauser in Germany. So they have isolated a crystal structure where they have, uh, let's say, a uh, hexyl, Permanganate linked to a magnet four in the center is magnet four and surrounded by six units of permanganate. This is highly active uh, species. If you increase, the only can be get a crystal structure at a very low temperature. If you use the increase the temperature up to uh, four minus four degree, immediately you get a lot of oxygen come out. Okay, this is a promoted oxygen formation by the central magnet four. Another one shows by also uh, Shilov uh, in a, a little years later. They also show this uh, permanganate here, the oral bond formation can be promoted by magnet 4. So in addition to magnet 4, another type of Lewis acid, uh, such as the bar, uh, the bar uh, fluoroborate here. And also, people also saw the with the light can also promote so all bond formation for minus seven. So back to us. Uh, so our proposal is this uh, minus four in S4 prime state can really promote the all bond formation from the minus seven here. And from here, you can start really maybe through another transition state we call the S4 double prime. Then from magnet seven to magnet five, and finally you have, let's say, molecular oxygen release by kicking out one proton. Another, the second substrate water comes in. This water is from 
the, via the, the uh, six one channel uh, by kicking out, kicking out the one proton, then you can reach to the S0 state, and here is the two uh, uh, hydroxyl here. And this is the O5H, OH, as a new bridging uh, uh, mu oxo uh, ligand. So this is the complete uh, first uh, catalytic cycle. That's what we understand. Do we have any experimental proof of this? No, I don't have. So you should have, you should do that. But I, we, did, we did have some experimental proof on the synthetic manganese oxide uh, that I would like to uh, show you. Maybe it's indirect proof. So recently we have uh, synthesized uh, a defective called the C-distorted manganese oxide of this structure. After annealing of at 300 degrees, uh, it shows the morphology of this material. It's like a flower, uh, like a hotonsia uh, flower-like, uh, which shows very active as a water oxidation catalyst at a neutral pH. In comparison, the black one shows here, if you don't have annealing of this one, does not show any activity at all. So this is a very good, uh, if you have some, show some numbers, a benchmark of 1.0 million um, per square centimeter, this is the current density, uh, with all potential of 330 milliwatt in uh, pH 7 phosphate buffer. And this is, can last a very long time, it's highly stable. For example, uh, if you put the, a potential 1.4 watt, it uh, can provide over 8 milliamp per square centimeter. And this is a lot, can last for 20, 20 hours, all the bubbles, 20 hours, no decay. So this is a really uh, impressive. Question now, what is the reaction mechanism for this uh, magnesium oxide? We call it the magnesium oxide 300. So we have made a deeper uh, study by electrochemical chemical uh, driven uh, water oxidation with this magnesium oxide. After catalytic current here, if we make reductive scan, we found a new wave here. That's to our delight. We are getting very excited. That means after catalytic cycle, we observe the uh, intermediate state. And this intermediate state appears at uh, 0.93 watt. So it's only appear this, uh, you can only detect this when you apply the potential above 1.1 watt. So of course, if you have applied water to the higher and higher, the intensity of this peak at the 0.93 become in, increase. Uh, also, we are very happy to see the active species can live around one hour. So a little bit longer than one, one hour. This is a lifetime. This provides us really plenty amount of time to study this intermediate state. Then we combine the electron chemistry with the infrared, okay? So at the infrared, before you make electrolysis, this black line shows here, the infrared. And after electrolysis at 1.4 watt, you see some new peaks showing here, and pay attention to the peak of 912 wave numbers. So this one, you see, also leaves around one hour, it'll be a long hour, which is in agreement with the redox potential at the 0 0.93 watt. So they come in, uh, in agreement very well. And if you increase the, uh, the, the, the applied potential, uh, the peak at the 912 wave numbers also can increase. Uh, as a comparison, if you make a similar measurement uh, on the magnesium oxide S without annealing, it does not show this peak, okay? So it's only magnesium 300, magnesium oxide 300 show this one. We have also uh, to figure out uh, this is really the active species, what's the structure of this uh, intermediate. So we made the uh, isotopic study. The first one we made is in, in addition to water, we, uh, we use a D2O and we observe the, the, the wave number of this uh, sensitive uh, 912 wave numbers does not change the precision at all. However, if we replace the water O16 by O18, you see the wave changes from 912 to 877 wave numbers. This means this active species does not contain any proton. It contains only oxygen and magnesium. Okay? 
Then now we have also compared this one with the permanganate, potassium permanganate. You see, uh, this is uh, after electrolysis in uh, neutral solution. After electrolysis in alkaline condition, they are more or less the same precision. It's 912 wave numbers. If you compare the manganese uh, uh, potassium permanganate, it's close but not identical, not exactly the same. Okay, so similar but not exactly the same. Then we propose the structure of these active spaces. It looks like this. So you have the matrix of the material manganese oxide. Then you have some defect, or you have some dangling manganese outside the, 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 the matrix. And we propose this is a manganese 7 oxide. Okay? And to our uh, further uh, interesting study, this must be active spaces. We add a little methanol. We're thinking methanol could be reductant. So when we add methanol, indeed, this active space has disappeared within one minute. So about six seconds, this wave disappeared. And then how about the permanganate? We also add a plenty amount of methanol into the permanganate. You see, after six hours, there's no change of permanganate. Means methanol is not easy to be oxidized by permanganate. It's need kinetic things. It's so many dynamics is okay, but kinetic is slow. That's why this is indicate that the observed intermediate minus seven oxo species is more active than permanganate. So we propose, therefore, the structure is like this. This is a magnesium 7 with a mu oxo link to the back of magnesium oxide. So back to the reaction mechanism based on this magnesium oxide 300. So we propose at, at zero state. So it's a magnesium, let's say, 3, 3, 3, 3, 4, and 3. OK, there's a magnesium 4 on, on the mesh near this mu oxo bridge. And after initial charge accumulation, here in case of magnesium oxide, by getting up for two protons and three electrons, you reach to the S3 state. S3 state, you have four manganese four. You see, magnesium four, 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 four. And from this one, you start charge rearrangement. This charge rearrangement, rearrangement uh, leads to the formation of one manganese seven, which is the dangling manganese and three manganese three. This is active species we have absorbed at the reduction potential of 0 0.93 watt and with IR 912 wave number. So this is the one absorbed. So in principle, this one can form all bound. However, if we have losing part of this one, maybe somehow this can be corroded. That becomes a permanent into the solution. So here, I would say you need another electron transfer to promote this ore bond formation by Lewis acid. And this is the magnesium 3 getting oxidized to magnesium 4. And this magnesium 4 promotes ore bond formation by Lewis acid effect. And then, and finally, you lead the formation of ore bond within the one magnesium and kick out one proton and the two water molecules come in. And this complete the catalytic cycle. So how relevant to our uh, natural uh, enzyme? So before that, I have, seen, I, have seen, I have one movie to show you how this permanganate uh, form for the magnesium oxide. Three electrodes set up. You have uh, working electrode with magnesium oxide, platinum. The bubble is a hydrogen, and here the bubble is oxygen. You do see little color thing here, yeah? And this purple color is what? So you can take away from use a syringe, take away and make a UV measurement, and you find this purple color is identical to a permanganate. So at the beginning, you generate permanganate as a corrosion product, and after I think uh, around one minute. This color scenes vanish, then continue the water, water split with this. So how relevant to our natural enzyme? So in nature, I think uh, uh, it takes a similar approach, but of course, nature more smart. And uh, from the S, uh, let's say S2 state, 
uh, the water insertion from the W3, again, W3 water inserted here, then the W4 promoted to the position of W3, a new water molecule as a substrate through uh, the calcium channel comes in and make this as three state. As three state, all magnets are four, and uh, after charge rearrangement, by kicking out one proton, you generate one magnet seven outside that on the diagonal magnets, and the rest of the magnets become magnet three. This is not good enough. You need another electron transfer to promote or bond formation from the permanganate spaces by oxidizing one of these magnet three to magnet four, and then from here, the oral bond form, probably through another transition state, then complete the catalytic cycle. So this is our understanding of nitrogen enzyme, how it works. In the catalytic part, I have not considered the surrounding, uh, the proteins, uh, amino acids, uh, how this uh, second sphere, uh, condition sphere influence. I think uh, with this new reaction mechanism in, in mind, uh, we dare to, 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 to say, uh, to claim that why uh, did nature choose magnet for calcium myoxo 5 as a catalyst for water fixation? So magnet is abundant no? and has a rich redox chemistry and can bear four charges by varying its valence from magnet 3 to magnet 7. Not so many other metals in the periodic table can do this. Okay? Magnet in this way is unique. And four magnets can cooperate and create one magnet seven and three magnet three via charge disproportionation of four magnet four. And magnet seven need to be unique. That's why nature puts this magnet outside the cube as a diagonal magnet. So four mu oxo bridges are essential uh, with one that is uh, O5 is ready for all bond formation and the other four for preventing the integral Cuban structure from falling apart. You keep the Cuban structure, that's also another key issue. Calcium, what's the role of calcium? So calcium is needed as a taxi stand for substrate water molecule before the transfer to the open side and to regenerate O5 for the next catalytic cycle. That's why I said this is uh, the new inserted so-called O6 in Professor Shen's uh, uh, word is a successor of O5. So therefore, uh, as an economic and a perfect uh, team playing catalyst, manganese calcium oxide cluster was chosen uh, for water station by nature three billion years ago. So what should we do uh, from now? I think we need experimental investigation and theoretical studies and uh, yeah, maybe also we can focus on the synthetic manganese uh, molecular catalyst or oxide to study uh, this reaction uh, mechanism. With that, I would like to thank my colleagues, uh, uh, Dr. Biao Biao Zhang, who is uh, sitting in the audience. By the way, we have also a poster hanged uh, in this room behind you. You can have a look. And I also would like to thank the financial support from the Swedish uh, Research Council. By the way, from the beginning of this year, I got a very honor to get um, this uh, Rod Professor, so distinguished professorship from the National uh, Swedish uh, uh, Research Council. And also uh, the Swedish Energy Agency, the Wallenberg Foundation for providing us uh, the funding. So I also would like to thank um, uh, our joint center between uh, Sweden and China uh, on the uh, molecular devices, which uh, was officially established since the year uh, 2006. So during the past uh, 12 years, a lot of uh, high-level presidential visits uh, with sending students, uh, uh, teachers, uh, is other. It has been very successful so far, uh, so good. Uh, finally, I would like to say four manganese as a team player, calcium as a taxi stand for water, and five myoxo bridges as a glue to keep OEC in function for a water station is the secret of nature for a billion years. So our team, the song team, thank you very much for your kind passion. Well, uh, that, that will certainly promote some discussion, but maybe I can lead off with a, a couple comments. Uh, um, so we, we actually 
published a paper in the 90s where we saw our manganese complex that disproportionated to make permanganate. Yes. Um, I read but we paper. viewed this as a deactivation pro process because mm -hmm. the permanganate formation correlated with loss of water oxidation activity. And that, that sort of leads me to wonder um, why, why this would be active for a catalyst and not deactivate. So if you're in the S3 state, you're ready to disproportionate. Yes. And why, it, what, one of the things that leads to reactivity is formation of strong bonds. So permanganate is so kinetically inert because you've got four very strong bonded oxos. And you're all set up to do that there. And so why don't you see permanganate formation in the S3 state? Uh, in the S3 state, you don't see the permanganate formation because in S3 state, you have all four manganese in the valence form. You need to create a permanganate, manganese 7, by charge dispersionation. Then you have on the diagonal manganese, you have OH. So if you create the one manganese 7 on the diagonal manganese, you increase the valence, you increase uh, the energy by minimum the energy you have to kick out one proton. So that's why it's from S3 to S4, it's only one proton involved because this is due to charge reaction. Re total charge is identical. However, you create a local charge is very high, minus seven. You need to kick out one proton from that place. And the rest is okay. The rest is from three magnus four to three magnus three. That's fine. So that's why you get mag uh, as a four state with one magnus seven Three manganese three, which in principle can form a bond, but you're right. Kinetically, very slow. That's why you need to follow up by another electron transfer to create S4 prime state. Then you have the Lewis acid works as manganese four. Then the all bond formation within the permanganate is getting faster and faster. That's a quickly released oxygen. Um, I'm just a comment, actually. Uh, when uh, the, of course, these valences, you say the manganese seven or three or four, this is, uh, this is our own formal, this is only a formal thing. Uh, actually, electrons are spread much more, especially around that, that cluster. So I, it is quite possible that uh, if you, well, I'll give my talk tomorrow, but the, 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 this cubane of highly, but highly valency manganese is a highly oxidizing cluster. It draws electrons away from the dangler manganese. Now, we might say dangler manganese has got a form of five. You could say seven. But those electrons, are, they're pulled. The cloud is pulled into the... So you're right. The, va the, the formal valency could be as high as seven. You see what I mean? Those are, so uh, that, that, is, that is not impossible. It sounds strange, but because it's, it's only uh, a, a convenience to say seven, it just means... It's the manganese that's given up a lot of electrons uh, to nearby neighbors and, and, and actually reduced the oxidized species through there. That's what you're saying. Overall, I don't agree with the mechanism. I do not believe that calcium uh, is a taxi stand. I think that's ridiculous. I think, <laughs> I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't believe that O5, the Stubbast emphasis on O5, you've got sitting there on calcium, water molecules, OHs, you've now Quite rightly, I say, get the point over that the dangler manganese is in a very high oxidizing state, hungry for electrons through the oxo, and that the, uh, and that the reaction occurs between water molecules which are on the calcium, or an OH, onto an oxygen, uh, which is an oxo, onto this very high, what you call, valency manganese. Okay, so let me comment. Let's answer your, your comment or questions. Uh, since uh, in this room, uh, it's not a chemist, not only biologist, I know some people also with the background of physics. So I describe the, the, the catalysis maybe in a common way. You don't have any professional training, you can understand the way how does nature work. I describe the, 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 the OEC as a uh, football club, okay? It's a team play football. You need to put the ball into the game, okay? However, you need not only one people, you need quite many people. Try to push the balls toward that direction. That direction, what direction? The dangling manganese. So you pass the ball to one, to another, to another, but finally, there must be one guy kick the ball into the gate. And that is the dangling manganese. And that is manganese seven. Okay, Phil. 
Um, I have many questions, but, but I'll, I'll, I'll uh, just uh, ask one. Um, related to the uh, uh, manganese O stretching frequency that you report, uh, can, you, can you explain again why you think that uh, rep suggests that you have a manganese 7? Right, because it's only, you to mean me at least. You mean naturally manganese oxide? In the manganese oxide, right? In manganese oxide, that yeah. That, to me, only suggests that you have a manganese oxygen multiple bond but it doesn't have to be manganese 7, right? It could be manganese 5. Actually, I quickly s Googled it, and, and there's an example from uh, Dave Goldberg that's at... Uh, yeah, um, uh, we, saw that, we saw that as manganese 7. Yeah, we saw that as manganese 7, not manganese, it's manganese 5. 5. We saw that as manganese 7, not manganese 5, because manganese 5 is hard to imagine. You have all bond formation within the same manganese. But with manganese 7, it's possible. But in a way, if you have magnet 5, the substrate water can well, make a nuclear field like a top, like Jim Barber said. That is possible. But there's lots of systems that yeah. are, are believed to be forming oxygen from a magnet 5. five it right? seems like that's not a problem. So yeah. I don't know why. Yeah, I agree with Teo that yeah. there's no reason why you yeah, should it's argue it's a higher oxidation yeah, state. We you argue know? for a higher <laughs> oxidation state instead of magnet 5. Can, can you go back to the number 7? Yeah. Would you mind going back to that slide just to. Sorry, I And we do have experiments. The movie I showed you, in the, you, you do absorb the magnet permanganate. But, but that relates to, to Gary's question of you know, permanganate being generated to activate the catalyst, right? Uh -huh. Once it does catalysis, you don't see that color still uh, coming out, right? Yeah, once you have yeah, the normal catalytic cycle, uh, you don't see the color anymore. But that means you have all the catalysts stable. At the beginning, it's not some part of the losing part. Maybe the oxal bond is weakened or somehow defect as inference. And then you generate magnet 7, however, it does not stay on the matrix of, of magnet oxide, it comes off. Once those you stayed on the magnet ma matrix, it still can work on the way of magnet 7, but it's robust. Uh, exactly picture, we don't have a clear picture, but yeah. Uh, I can, I can uh, comment a little bit about your question. Definitely, we try a lot of measure to uh, uh, confirm it's magnet 7. Uh, actually, the IR can speak loudly because if you check from the uh, studies, uh, people identify what's the uh, uh, species. IR is uh, uh, powerful because for the magnesium 5 oxo, the IR absorption, the peaks is not in 900, it's much lower. Yeah. Nine twelve. Nine twelve. Yeah, so it's a big difference. It's a big difference. Yeah, difference. yeah, yeah that's a big difference. I, 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 think, difference. I think some yeah. of this discussion might be better offloaded to private discussion. Um, I, this has generated so many questions. I'm sure we that's have lots of fully but, um, expected. <laughs> but I, let, let's let I think Holger had one last question, yeah. and then we need to move on to the next yeah. speaker. Yeah. So I, I fully agree. We had a lot of questions, and I, uh, there will be a lot of objections. Uh, my question is more basic or general. <coughs> I have difficulties to imagine that you have a manganese 7 close to uh, manganese 3 ions. So what, what is the force, in a way, that generates uh, the formation of manganese 7 close to manganese 3 ions? OK, what are the driving force for SO3 state to SO4 state? Yeah, you have light. Right? So, uh, so what? So, the question, uh, I, if so I interpret my point your question in the correct way, uh, how to generate a magnet yeah. 7 close to a magnet 3? Yeah, right. So I think that's a very good question. To generate a magnet uh, 7, you need a 4 magnet 4 through the charge disproportionation. And I understand the magnet 7 formation parallel with the 3 magnet 3 formation, you have a big redox change there. That's why you cannot generate all bond formation easily from the S4 state. You need oxidize one of the manganese 3 to that manganese should be close 
to the magnet 7, not on the other side of the magnet. There are but, two possibilities, uh, right? No. I understand that. Yeah. But, but then you need to oxidize that's minus 3 to minus okay. 4. Okay, that's okay. becomes okay. stable. Let's, yes. uh, let's, let's uh, thank uh, Li Cheng for a very provocative <laughs> talk. Okay, thank you. <laughs>